What's a relatively unknown technological invention that will have a huge impact on the future? Research into bacteriophages, bacteria targeting viruses, could cure antibiotic resistant bacterium such as MRSA, TBHI was actually waiting for someone to say this. This can be revolutionary since it allows specific targeting. Gene therapy is no longer science fiction. My girlfriend got Luxterna surgery and the results have been amazing. She used to be unable to see at all at night and now she can guide herself without a cane. More treatments like that are going to keep coming and be standard before we realize it. Biotech science in general is undergoing a massive and amazing sea change right now. Gene therapy is a huge wave that's just getting started even now, and there are so many related applications that are really exciting. We are swiftly getting to the point of being able to edit safely. We can already teach your own modified immune cells to attack your cancer in things like CAR T. And the field is really still in its infancy yet. Imagine fighting cancer effectively without the side effects of chemo. We will look back someday and think chemo was barbaric. We will look back someday and think chemo was barbaric. Someone close to me went through chemo. To think that one day, it may be a thing of the past instead of a necessity makes me very hopeful for our future. Wow that's great. I always like news of gene therapy. While not an unknown technology, deepfake is still in its infancy and it terrifies me. We already live in a time when people take irrefutable video evidence and somehow find ways to rationalize away what they are seeing. People don't listen to science anymore truth has become frighteningly subjective. Think of all the videos of police shootings, political scandals, whistleblowers, assassinations and more. Now, and in a technology that has the potential to create doubt about the validity of what we are seeing, it's the perfect excuse, and all people will need, to kill that last little bit of logical thought deep in their brain. It is a perfect tool to create chaos and discord. Politicians will use it to create confusion and doubt, to sow fear, create false narrative and delegitimize their opponents, or to cast doubt on crimes and acts they have committed. Something that was once impossible to rationalize away will become yet another misinformation to launder engine to sow doubt. Surprised to find this so far down. This is the first thing I thought of, besides DNA evidence. I feel like video evidence is our most reliable. With deepfakes, our entire judicial system will have to adjust, and that's terrifying. How do you know what to trust? You could be fed anything and not know if it's true or not. That's some black mirror sh right there. Wireless EKG machines. As an epileptic I'd be pretty into a wireless EG too. As an epileptic, I'd love to see more accessible self-driving cars. Specifically, one that can take over and safely park and call 911 if it detects the driver having a seizure or other loss of consciousness. I would think I wireless e technology could play a huge part of that. Realistically, the use of carbon grids to reproduce the catalytic effects of rhodium metal, commonly used in catalytic converters. Rhodium metal is currently trading at $13,000 after a huge spike due to worldwide emissions restrictions that took effect in 2020. Long story short there is only two places on earth to effectively find the stuff and it is going to run out, well before fossil fuels and other important building materials do. Replacing rhodium with carbon in catalytic purposes would save global manufacturers hundreds of billions a year and make many consumer goods much more affordable. It's a logical step. Carbon hood. Carbon converter. Carbon wheels. The only stop gap is pricing. One day I will be able to walk into a dealership and buy a base model Corolla with a carbon fiber hood. Make many consumer goods much more affordable. Something tells me GM isn't going to pass those savings on to me. Lithium sulfur batteries are in development right now that could make battery storage much cheaper than current lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries. Lower cost batteries mean more people can afford to use them, and that's more internal combustion engines, replaced with electric motors. While I'm at it, battery recycling. Every element in a battery can be extracted, and recycled into new batteries, especially the lithium. A former founding member of Tesla has actually already opened a plant to do just that. I'm a bit skeptical. There are dozens, if not hundreds. Huge capacity and theoretically cheaper batteries out there that have never left the research phase. I'm not sure if Lies is the same. There's often a trade off with different chemistry. But we're seeing massive improvements in battery technology. My 2014 Tesla has the same amount of power in the battery. What hours? 
as a new Model 3, but the new Tesla weighs over 1,000 pounds less, and has 80 more miles of range. Printed human skin and organs. There are still some decent hurdles to overcome for macro-scale application of 3D printing biologicals, but yeah this will be a super good one in the future. I think there was a 3D printed trash tube not too long ago, pretty cool. The guy involved in that was dismissed amid findings of misconduct, and most of the patients seem to have died. The scandal also led to the resignation of the Vice Chancellor and Dean of Research of the Karolinska Institute where he worked. After an expose on Swedish TV, I actually got the number one spot on our all for a post about similar research, and I've followed the outcome with embarrassment about unknowingly promoting it. It's a reminder not to go too overboard on hype about new technologies. You need a lot of fundamental research before many of these technologies will make it to the clinic safely. And we need strong processes that look at evidence instead of hype. Low pressure solar powered drip irrigation systems. Some more information from MIT. Drip irrigation delivers water through a piping network to drip emitters that release the water directly at the base of the crops, avoiding water losses due to evaporation. Runoff and infiltration. Drip can reduce water consumption by 20-60% compared to conventional flood irrigation, and has been shown to increase yields by 20-50% for certain crops, because irrigation accounts for over 70% of fresh water use in most regions of the world. Large-scale adoption of drip irrigation would reduce the consumption of fresh water and be an asset for locations around the world experiencing water shortages and groundwater depletion. As a fan of anything efficient, I'm spinning. Irrigation innovation is gonna be huge, I think. Especially in places like California where water isn't as abundant. Researchers are also working on ways to water each plant individually in an orchard or field. So the field isn't overwatered and plants don't receive more water than necessary. The whole idea is to use the water and fertilizer you have as efficiently as possible. It's pretty cool stuff. MMMH yes of course. Elementary, the vast majority of fresh water usage is for agriculture, most of which is lost due to evaporation. Finding ways to more efficiently irrigate crops lead to more reliable food supply, fewer droughts, and easier access to fresh water. I saw a new solar panel that is like glad wrap that goes on windows, clear, thin, film that covers windows and collects solar power, so you don't need to put the large panels on rooftops. So if you think about it on city skyscrapers there is more surface area on the sides of the building than the roof. Everyone east and west of the building having invisible solar panels. Did you know that they have developed implants which can grow with you? Meaning that kids with faulty heart valves or damaged organs which require a synthetic element can undergo just one surgery as they're young and never have to have further surgeries for replacement as they grow. My housemate is a chemical engineer and she told me all about it I thought it was interesting. I've had heart surgery three times for a faulty aortic valve first to widen the biological one as I was too young for a mechanical, second for a mechanical replacement, third for a mechanical root as the valve was too damn powerful for my existing aortic root. Each time I've had full on chest splitting open heart surgery, and each time they've introduced a keyhole procedure to do the same thing within a year, and now you tell me I colder just had it once if I'd been born a few years later. Ah well, born a few years earlier and I wouldn't be here at all. So swings and roundabouts. If it's any consolation I now think you are a total bad eight half mofo. First and foremost, that sounds amazing. Second, my dumb may definitely thought you were talking about breast implants in the first sentence. Breast implants that can grow with you just made me think of ladies at the retirement home a hundred years from now with absolute watermelons on their chests so thanks for that image. Solid state batteries, maybe, from memory, larger capacity, much faster charging, and significantly longer life. Crops that can grow anywhere, I think there are some good developments in this type, and this means draft and insects would no longer affect the growth. This would decrease poverty and famine. Biochips are now a reality of sorts, means we can test various drugs and treatments on your genetics without doing it on you. No animal testing, whole cohorts of test subjects that are chips, just a biochip, so we can find the cure or treatment for something and know it will work before prescribing it. It will be a while until it's mainstream and used instead but it's a reality. I'm surprised no one has said it yet. But automation is getting incredibly sophisticated. 
there will be no need to for a lot of people to work in factories. I went to an assembly expo and the manufacturing technology of today is mind-blowing. Some jobs you still need humans. But even then, many of those jobs are getting foolproof to the point that previous jobs that required skills will be able to be replaced by cheaper labor with lesser skill. I think it's ultimately a good thing. But who knows how long it will be before society catches up to technology. This is definitely gonna change our society in a profound way in the next decades and will challenge capitalism in a lot of ways. It will not only replace factory jobs but plenty of other jobs. We'll have to think what to do with all the people who won't have a job because machines will be able to do certain jobs better and cheaper than any human ever could. This could be a huge opportunity for society if handled correctly or could be the biggest problem we have ever faced. Batteries containing nuclear waste in cases in synthetic diamond, supposedly can go thousands of years without charge and are perfectly safe. Currently being trialed in the UK, better voltaics. They are more of energy harvesters than batteries, but being able to last 100s of years is really cool for some things. They don't put out much power ATM though, so they are pretty niche. I they are coming along nicely hopefully they can find a way to prove produce energy from them. The potential is theoretically huge. 3D printing at home. Imagine downloading the blueprints of whatever you need. Customize it and have it printed overnight and into your hands. What is now a hobby will soon be a common household tool. Star Trek replicators here we come. No joke. NASA printed a rocket thruster. Titanium printers exist. My bet is on CRISPR. A genetic technology that enables DNA modification on live organisms. At a very low cost. Sadly I cannot predict whether the impact will be positive or not. I'm betting we'll discover a new, better gene editing technology. CRISPR is much better than older methods, but it's nowhere near good enough to be used commonly in humans without making major improvements, or not even simple eucheriodes for that matter. Big step nonetheless, but really is just a step towards a good method. The pace in which gene technology is improving is honestly astonishing. When I had my gene editing classes in my master's course, the stuff we learned in the first month was already obsolete at the time of the exam. The invention of hypersonic missiles is starting an arms race not seen since the Cold War and nobody seems to care. I'm assuming the benefit here is that these missiles can bypass current missile defense systems. I'm assuming the benefit here is that these missiles can bypass current missile defense systems. Precisely. That and they have basically infinite range. I think that's because the same rules of mad applies. If you use those you get nuked. There's no casual hypersonic missile war the same way there's no casual nuclear war. So it's a solved problem. As much as mad is a solution. The problem is hypersonic munitions are first strike munitions. As the time to react becomes smaller and smaller. The retaliatory threat becomes a smaller and smaller threat. That's the concern with weapons of that nature. Because they actually diminish mad considerations when it comes to WMDs rather than allow for a status quo. Any kind of advance in batteries and the ability to store electrical energy. A huge portion of electronic devices are only limited in scope because of how much battery power it would require. And that's a field which has become largely stagnant. There are a few promising things out there but nothing actively in development. But such an advance in technology would unlock the potential of technology that already exists but is currently impractical. That's a field which has become largely stagnant. I don't think that statement is accurate. There's a lot of development right now to support electric cars, which can be translated over to stationary storage a lot easier than the other way around. There's teams working on graphene graphite based solid state batteries. The guy who invented lithium ion batteries just received a patent for a new type of battery using glass and sodium. Tesla has been hinting at a new battery tech. Arguably, the battery market is more active now than it has been in a long time. Don't forget making electronics more power efficient, as well. It's at a lane street. The problem I think stems from PCs being plugged in and most mobile development still being in the mindset of PC developers. They get a more powerful device and instead of building on the efficient code they had to make for the last one, they just build a bloated lazy app for the new one because it can power through the laziness. In other words, if more developers would code like they did for the first smartphones our refined batteries would already be lasting all damn day. BCI brain computer interface have been used to control games with your mind. 
speak to another person telepathically, and make prosthetic limbs be controlled easier. CBI computer brain interface have been used to make a blind person regain their sight through camera glasses, and make monkeys feel things in VR that weren't there. If we perfect both of these we could do a lot. Long distance wireless electricity transport, space solar panels, here we come, see Dyson swarms with maser power transmitters, technically possible with existing technology, 2, you only have to consume like all of mercury for the resources required. Energy storing smart bricks that could one day turn the walls of our houses into batteries, that's really cool, especially how it changes the bricks blue, I can see the ad campaign now. Blue brick batter is what's in your walls, just because you're not a millionaire, it doesn't mean you can't hide jewels in your house. I'd have to go with fusion power, it definitely exists and is possible, but is still in the research phase and always remains slightly out of reach. But ITER is being built in France which should be able to produce a tenfold increase in energy output over input. Additionally, new discoveries are being made all the time in how fusion devices could be miniaturized. Imagine mere limitless clean energy and fossil fuels becoming redundant. I was talking with my spine surgeon and he said in 30 years they will be able to regenerate the gel in your spine. Practically giving you a new bag. Nice try, Wall Street. I feel like Spasix being able to reuse rockets doesn't get enough attention. Costs for getting stuff into space will go down, meaning more possible space stations or even building a mega structure one day. Car manufacturers started installing this device in your car that will indicate when you plan on turning or changing lanes. It's called a turn signal, but most drivers who know about it refer to it as a blinker. Not many people have picked up on it yet, but when it goes mainstream. It will make driving so much simpler. Lab-grown meat. Meat has a huge impact on our environment. Not to mention that lab-grown meat can be made a bit more healthy for you and ultimately way cheaper. And of course we're all suffering through COVID because someone wanted to eat a live bat. Our where's the beef is about it.